Hi everybody and welcome to an introduction to forensic science. Today we're going to be asking the basic questions and answering them. The first question is, what is forensic science? And the answer is pretty simple. Forensic science is the application of science to criminal and civil law. In other words, forensic science is the use of science to solve crimes. What is it that forensic scientists do? Well, they have a number of responsibilities. One of these is to collect evidence from the crime scene. Another is to process and analyze that evidence. And a third, in many cases, is to testify before a court of law about the evidence that they've collected, analyzed, and processed. So to review, forensic scientists collect evidence, they process it, they analyze it, and then they testify in court about their conclusions. It's important to note here that while a forensic scientist might be part of a police force or a private practitioner that's hired by the defense or hired by the prosecution, they must be impartial in their analysis and their testimony. That's the expectation for any scientist to not let bias creep into their work, and that's the expectation for a forensic scientist as well. What are the different realms of forensic science? What are the different sorts of things that forensic scientists do? Forensic scientists analyze fingerprints, so comparing fingerprints that might be found at a crime scene to the fingerprints of a suspect, someone who's suspected of being involved in the crime. Serology or toxicology, this is looking at body tissues and fluids to figure out things like whether there were drugs in the system of a victim at the time of their death or uh, whether they might have been poisoned. Forensic pathology, this is conducting work such as an autopsy uh, to determine the cause of death. For example, was it blunt force trauma or was it arsenic poisoning? To determine the manner of death, was it homicide or was it an accident? And to determine the time of death. Did this person die an hour ago, a day ago, a week ago, maybe a year ago? We're also interested in forensic anthropology. This is working with human remains, usually that are older and more decomposed, like these ones you see here, to try to determine something about this person. What was their age when they died? What about their sex? What about their ethnicity? Through this kind of work, we can determine, sometimes, who these people are whose bodies might be found. DNA analysis is extremely commonly practiced these days and involves the comparison of DNA found at a crime scene or perhaps on a victim's body, the comparison of that DNA with DNA of a suspect uh, to try to determine whether that person was linked to the crime. We also have forensic use of computer science, for example, looking at files that a person might have thought were really deleted from their hard drive but are still accessible, or we might have a device that uh, needs that has uh, important information on it, but which the person has locked and, and we need to get into it. We have ballistics as well. So this is the examination of firearms and bullets, doing things like determining whether a bullet that was found embedded in the torso of a victim could have been fired by a gun in the possession of a suspect. And then finally, document analysis. This is doing things like looking at forgeries. So here you have it again to review, uh, fingerprinting, serology, toxicology, pathology, anthropology, DNA analysis, ballistic, computer science, document analysis, and others that I have not listed here. It's important to note that most forensic scientists are highly specialized and they would really only focus on one or another of these. Uh, they wouldn't, you know, you, you would, it would be very surprising to find someone who could carry out sophisticated DNA analysis, forensic anthropology work, computer science work, uh, toxicology fingerprinting, typically folks are specialists who perform just one of these. Though you might have some people who uh, are capable of doing uh, multiple such tasks. Level of confidence is a really important idea for us to discuss at the beginning of this course. No scientific process produces 100% reliable results. There's always, and this includes forensic techniques, there's always false results, sometimes. And by false results, we mean false positives, meaning a forensic test showed that a person was linked to a crime, even though they really weren't, as well as false negatives, meaning a forensic result showed that a person was not involved in a crime, even though they really were. I think you can see the importance of this in the legal context. A false positive might result in a person going to jail or even being executed for a crime they did not commit. Whereas a false negative might result in a person who committed a terrible crime being released and going on to commit further crimes. For many of the forensic techniques that are in use today, the error rates are not known. In other words, we don't know whether 
this technique fails one in every ten times, or one in every hundred times, or one in every thousand times. However, this lack of error rates and the background studies that would establish them do not prevent the use of forensic evidence in the courtroom. The only thing that determines that is the judgment of the judge. If the judge decides that the forensic technique is sound and should be deployed, then it is. And if the judge decides that it's not appropriate, then it's not used. And that's it. So continuing work has to be done, must be done, to improve our knowledge of forensic science so that when we use science in the courtroom, we can be confident that, that we're making the correct judgments. People's lives depend on it. In the meantime, while that work is still uh, unfinished, forensic scientists, lawyers, judges, and jurors must be careful to approach this work with proper skepticism, meaning they need to make sure that when they hear a forensic scientist, if you're a juror, let's say, when you hear a forensic scientist testifying, you don't assume that everything you're hearing is totally true and that there's no chance at all that any mistake was made. Because that's not the case. Mistakes do get made, and all of these processes do have error rates. We just don't know what they are yet in, in many cases. Um, but we also don't want to go too far in the other direction and assume that there's nothing of value in forensic science, that uh, all of this is mere opinion, um, and that this kind of evidence can't tell us anything about a criminal case, because that's not true either. So we've got to try to come to this with all of our thinking abilities, all of our power of reason, to try to determine how much confidence to invest this kind of evidence with. To review, forensic science is the application of science to civil and criminal law. Forensic scientists collect, process, analyze, and testify about evidence relevant to legal cases. Forensic scientists are often highly specialized, focusing on one of many diverse disciplines. And all participants in the legal system must be careful to accord forensic evidence only the confidence it deserves based on peer-reviewed studies. That's it for our introduction to forensic science. I hope you'll join us for future sessions. I hope this was helpful, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.